Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So today we're gonna take a look at the Crate GT212 um, guitar amplifier. This is a 120 watt version. They also have, I think it's a 65 watt version of the same amp. Um, but anyways, this is 120 watts. So a lot more headroom, a lot more dBs. Oh my gosh. Anyways, um, so we've got a clean channel that's completely independent, a rhythm channel and a solo channel. Now, the solo and the rhythm do share the EQ on the rhythm channel, okay? But the clean channel is completely on its own. It's not sharing itself with any of the other channels, other than, of course, the reverb is shared across all three channels. Now, this amp also has um, RCA inputs, uh, so you can hook up your, you know, MP3 player, CD player, whatever you want, jam along with your favorite tunes through the amp all at the same time, which is cool has an insert jack on the back for hooking in your, your pedals or pedal board processor. Um, also has a cab out feature that also allows the internal speakers to still be on when you're using external cabs, which is really a cool feature. Um, and then of course it also has two other jacks, one's for reverb to turn the reverb on and off through a foot switch. And then it's got another foot switch jack so you can scroll through, you know, clean, rhythm, and solo, right? So you can get your settings all set the way you need them and just go click, click, click as you need to, and voila. Um, now, I picked this amp up, uh, used, of course, because you can't buy it brand new anymore. I looked at a few videos on YouTube. There's only actually about six uh, on this exact amp, and the audio uh, was horrifying, uh, let alone the video. Uh, itself, but the audio was actually the worst part of it all, and I really couldn't judge carefully enough. So I went and I saw the guy that had it, tried it out, thought okay, and we didn't wail it outside. <laughs> you got to respect the neighborhood. Um, but I thought okay, that seems like a pretty viable machine to me. And uh, so there you go. Now, this amp right now in Canada sells anywhere between uh, about $150 to $510, is what I've been finding. Um, you know, depending on condition, of course. Now, this thing is in exceptionally good condition. Uh, there's not even static on the pots. The lubricant from the factory is still in these pots, and they still run smooth, which is really uh, something that you don't often find in an older amp. Usually, they're static. The pots are loose, you know, because somebody else will probably spray them at one time with contact cleaner instead of the proper stuff that leaves the lubricant behind. Um, these are exceptional. Um, so I was quite impressed. And uh, I've played around with a little bit in the house here in the studio um, and thought, well, I think we're going to have to do a really good video. Now, I did check out online reviews, which I don't always um, agree with because, you know, some of these people are, you know, they just, I don't know. But it has some really outstanding reviews. And I thought, okay, well, let's see how good this thing really is. And so I myself have got my experience with it, and I got to say, I got to <laughs> kind of agree with everybody, except on one point. I never give a five-star review on anything because nothing is perfect that man makes, okay? Nothing. Even what robots make for us in factories, nothing is perfect. Um, so my end result on this is, I'm going to tell you right now, is going to be a four and a half out of five. Um, but I still want to go through the audio with you guys. Now, I'm miking up the amp with a Zoom H124 bit stereo recorder, uh, which can handle the dB level, uh, apparently, of, I think they said a 747, seven, what is it, 747? Uh, jet engine at full throttle, anyways, uh, without distortion. So I'm thinking, well, okay, we'll put that to the test. Um, either way, um, first time ever using this mic, um, you know, for doing videos like this, actually second time, because I did the orange amp earlier today. Um, but, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's check this thing out and, uh, see what it does. Now, this mic is hooked into my mixer, which is a 16-bit mixer, so it goes 16, uh, 24 to 16 into my focus right box, which reconverts back to 24-bit. So let's see what this thing can actually offer us. Now, I'm using my, uh, Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro, uh, guitar for this, and, um, you know, I'm not going to look at you guys here because I, we got to concentrate on, you know, doing some stuff for you here. But um, we're going to start, we're going to go through, uh, you know, um, the, the bridge, the middle position for the two pickups, and of course the neck, 
uh, on all three channels. So I'm not going to bother with split coiling or any of that other jazz, so we're going to leave that alone. And I am using a Boss wireless kit as well for, you know, I don't like patch cables anymore, so. Now, all the, uh, the bass mids and trebles, by the way, on all the channels are all at 12 o'clock. So let's just make sure that's right at 12. And now the solo channel has a shape, which is pretty unique. We'll get into that after, though. Also mentioned this is also an open back enclosure amp too, so it's going to have a lot loud, more loudness to it than a closed back. Now the other thing that impressed me about this thing is the EQ is very sensitive on this, even with the uh, the low, um, it's very responsive. So let's turn that low to 9 o'clock. Let's go back to 12. You can hear the difference. So if you find that your neck pickup is getting a little muffled, pull back on the bass a bit. You know, sometimes less is more, you know, even in mixing. So let's bring the volume to 12 o'clock, as high as I'm putting any of these channels, because this thing's really loud. Start with the bridge. You hear it's really chimey there. So let's pull the highs back. definition there on the high, so let's bring that back to the middle. strings on my on my uh, Taylor I don't know if you can hear it but listen a little chime off the strings anyways that's only at half volume so let's bring that back so let's uh, go check out the rhythm channel here <laughs> some gain to that. Let's bring her up to 12. <laughs>
back down. Let's bring the level to half. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. Wow. Talk about loud in here. Oh, now you know why musicians are deaf, or mostly deaf. All right, guys, so that's the crate, uh, GT212, and it is extremely, extremely obnoxious, and we didn't go full blast. You know, we didn't go past, like, half, and that is just an amazing amplifier. So I, I got to agree with online reviews, man. This thing is nice and crispy clean. Um, it's got plenty of headroom, you know. Um, putting this thing onto some external cabs, whoa, that'll really, really kick some butt. Anyways, um, kicks butt just as it is with the 212s in there. Um, now, um, the controls are great. The EQs are very sensitive, which is something that you want. I mean, you want to be able to just dial back, you know, enough of your bass to, to clean it up more so it's not so muffled or maybe add a bit of treble, you know, just a hint. Um, same with your mids. You know, you want to be able to do what you need to do and shape your sound. And the amp is extremely responsive. It kind of reminds me a lot of the orange. Uh, the orange amps are extremely responsible, on, uh, res responsible, responsive on their EQs and all their controls, actually. And this one's no different. The real, actual spring reverb that's in this thing is also really, really cool. And uh, I don't know if you heard it on the video when it was chiming the strings of my tailor, but it takes a, a fair bit of, of throat to actually do that, and it still can do it, and that's not even, like, past half volume, and it can do it. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Uh, the amp is definitely, definitely, um, I I if you need something for outdoor gigs, uh, whether it be in a, a mid to, to large area, or if you just want something a little bit bigger for a smaller venue, because what you have might not be quite cut in the mix properly, especially over top your drummer, if he's an acoustic drummer, this amp will definitely take care of that and then some. And I like how clean it stays. I mean, that is like really, really good. Um, that's that's a, a really cool amp. So I would say Crate uh, amps are definitely up there. You know, they're definitely really good quality. Um, you know, I think personally that the amp is way too big for my studio, so I'm not going to be keeping this amp. Um, you know, but you never know until you try something. I mean, it sounds different in different environments, right? When I tested it, it was in an outdoor environment, so I actually had to turn it up to get some volume, you know, because you're using the planet as your speaker cab, right? Uh, it does have an open back, right? So the sound goes everywhere. Um, but um, yeah, definitely, uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, they're definitely worth whatever they were selling for new and on the used market like I said they, they have their variance depending on condition and this one is an exceptionally good condition so it would be on the higher area you know um, but uh, if you get a chance to try one out yourself um, then definitely do it and if it's something that you could really make use of uh, that would suit your needs then I would say snag it you know um, you know, I, I liked the Boss Katana, don't get me wrong. I mean, I got rid of my Katana uh, because I'm going to get the Mark II that's uh, now been released. I'm just waiting for them to come into Canada um, because the Mark II actually has all the features that I was hoping would come out if they released another version of the Katana lineup. And, of course, they have, and boom, it's there. You know, it's like so. It's like, hmm, guess I don't need two Katanas, um, but definitely could use the new one. Um, in the meantime, I did get the orange, and I like the orange. I'm keeping the orange. Um, it's a great little amp for a lot of different purposes. Um, but, um, yeah, the, this crate, uh, that is definitely, I mean, I don't play big, huge venues where I'd need this kind of power, um, you know, so it's kind of like, eh, it's a little overkill for me. And it's definitely overkill for the studio, uh, in my opinion, at least this size of a studio. Um, but, um, yeah, do check them out. Um, let me know what you guys thought, too, of the audio. Uh, like I said, I checked out. There was only six videos total that I found anywhere, um, and, you know, YouTube included, right, um, on this actual amp, you know, the same wattage, the same version, etc. cetera. And uh, the audio was just, it was horrifying, you know. So uh, I'm hoping that the audio turns out really good. Now, as a tip to you guys who watch gear review videos, because I watch them too, I don't just make gear videos, I watch them as well when I'm looking for something. Um, if you can 
afford a set of studio monitors, get a set, like a decent set, not a, you know, $120 set of Mackies because they're useless, but get a decent set, like a set of Yorkville fives or sixes, whatever you want, um, or get some really good quality headphones because that's going to give you the best audio reproduction because YouTube compresses the daylights out of the stuff as it is. And listening through computer speakers or a built-in speaker on your computer or device is not going to cut it as far as saying, okay, I really want that. Because when I listen to those videos, I was listening to them even through my studio monitors. Um, and it's like, I, I couldn't, I was, you know, and I'm, I'm just like this, right? And I'm like, I can't believe it's that crappy. Um, you know, so it's definitely the guy's gear because when you look at the dates of the videos and what we had for gear back then for cameras and stuff, I mean, yeah, we all sucked on a lot of stuff, which is why I deleted most of my channel and started over when I got, you know, high definition stuff. Um, but um, definitely, I think this is probably about the best that I'm going to be able to do and a 24-bit input uh, recording device direct in, I think that hopefully makes this amp shine well enough for you guys that you would be like, wow, that thing's really cool. Um, and uh, keep in mind, it's extremely loud in this room, but it's still very clean. And I love the sound of it. Um, it's just, it's way too obnoxious. And I, I have people that live upstairs. They're not home right now, but, you know, I got to respect my neighbors too, right? Like the rest of us should. <laughs> um, but uh, this would be way too overkill, which is another reason why I went to the orange and I'm going to get, you know, the Katana Mark II because I can keep the volumes down lower and still get a really nice tone whether, you know, there's people home or not around me. So that's kind of a neat thing. But this thing is just way too much um, for the studio, which I didn't actually know until I put it in here and thought, okay, you know. Um, but uh, it is a great amp, though. Yeah, it definitely is. And I'm glad I've had the opportunity to, to pick one up and to try it out and to share my experience with you guys with this amp uh, on YouTube as well. So anyways, there you go. So thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe um, and hit that um, bell for, you know, whenever I do a new video, you'll be notified type of thing. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.